Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to see how we can work with APIs in a JavaScript. And by that, I mean how we can send and retrieve data from an API. Therefore, I chose an API so we can send some requests and get some responses from it. It is called JSON Placeholder. And as you can read here, it is a free fake API for testing and prototyping, which is exactly what we want. We're going to look at three different methods in a JavaScript to create HTTP requests. The first one is XML HTTP request object, which was the only way to create HTTP request before ES6 came out. And when ES6 released, it brought a new method or it brought a new way to create HTTP request. And it is called fetch API, which is the second method that we're going to look at it. And the last method that we're going to look is uh, called Axios library. So it is an external library and we need to install it. But for now, we can start by looking at the XML HTTP request object. So let's open the text editor. And as you can see, I already created the HTML file, which contains the skeleton of HTML. So there is nothing special about it. Now I'm going to create a JavaScript file and call it script.js. So we can write our JavaScript codes inside it. Then we can add that file to this uh, HTML code by using a uh, script tag and the source will be script.js then inside this javascript file we can start by creating a new xml http request object and then because we're going to use this uh, object again we can store it to a variable and call it request now we have the object we can use a method from it which is called open so we're going to use it to configure a request so we can type request dot open and this open method will take three arguments the first one is the http method that we want to use which is in this case get but we will also look at post request after we are done with this one the second argument will be the URL that we want to send the request to it. For that, you can open this page again and go to the guide. And here they are showing some examples of how this API works. And they are using fetch API, which is the second method that we're going to look at it. But for now, we just need this URL so we can copy it and paste it here. The last argument will determine if we want to run this, pro this process, the sending and the getting response, asynchronous. So if we want, we can pass through, otherwise we can pass false. But by default it is true, so we can just let it as it is. Then we can send this uh, request by using the send method. And actually the send method will uh, take, uh, take an argument, uh, which is the body of the request, but uh, in this case, when we are when we sending a GET request, so we don't need to pass it. But when we want to send a POST request, we're gonna pass it. So, but we're gonna look at it later. Then to see the response, we need to look at or we we need to listen for an event which is called load. So this load event will run when this whole process is done. So we send the request we got the response and the response is downloaded completely so in that time this event will be wrong so we can type request.onload create a callback function for it and here inside this uh, callback function we can uh, console.log then we can type request.response and now I'm going to run this code. So here I can inspect it. Actually, we can have this uh, console with these uh, codes at the same time. Now, as you can see, this is the response that we got, but this is just a string. We can convert it to JavaScript object by using the json.parse method. And then we can pass this response as argument to it. And here it is. So now it is 
in a JavaScript uh, object format. Now let's also see how we can send a post request. So as I did before, we will look at it. So to do that, we can first copy this part and comment it. Then we can type post request. And here we can paste the code that we copied. And then we can uh, change this get to post. And we also need to change this uh, URL. So if we come back to this uh, guide page and scroll down to this creating a resource part. So we can copy this URL and paste it here. So actually it was the same. We just uh, removed this uh, one from it. Now we also need to pass the body of the request to this send method, as I mentioned before. So which will be this uh, this part. So we can copy it and pass it as argument to this send method. And this JSON string file will actually convert this uh, JavaScript uh, object that we passed as argument to this string file method. So it will convert it to a string because we can just send the JavaScript object over internet or over a network. And uh, this method will convert it to a string. We also need to set the, the header. So for that, you can copy this part. And when we are working with the XML HTTP we can set a header by using set request header. Then we can pass the text that we copied. And we also need to change it to comma. And this uh, set request header takes two arguments. The first one is the header name. The second one is the value that we want to set to this header. Now, if I open the console, you see that we got the response and this response is same as uh, this response that they mentioned. So that means that everything works as it should. Now we are, we are actually done with the XML HTTP request. So we can, uh, I just drag it. it. So, and now we can jump to the next method, which is the fetch API. So we can look at it, uh, look at it uh, also and see how we can do these uh, things with that. So first let me comment these lines and then here I can type fetch API. So here we can start by calling the fetch and this fetch method will take two arguments. The first one is the URL that we want to send the request to it and the second one will be needed when we want to, for example, add or update some information about the request that we want to send. For example, if we want to change the HTTP method that we want to use, or if we want to add some headers and things like that. But when we want to create just a simple GET request, we need just to pass the URL. So we can copy this URL and paste it here. And uh, for now, it is just all we need, but when we want to create a post request, we need to pass the second argument as well. Okay, so because this fetch method will return a promise, we can create a async await function and call it get data. Then we can move this fetch inside this inside this function and uh, we can create a variable and call it response and then we can await for this promise and if i just console.log this response you will see first i need to just call this uh, function that we created so you see that we got a response object, which contains some information about the response that we got, but the 
the data that we are interested in is, is this body. So this body contains the data that we need or the data that we want. And by default, we can just read it. So we need to convert it to JSON or uh, text. And we can do it by using the response.json. So this JSON method will actually return another promise. And that promise will give us the data we need. And that data will be converted to JSON. So therefore, we can create another variable and call it the uh, data then we can await for this promise and now if i just console.log this data you will see this data is uh, exactly same as uh, this data that we saw before so that means that we successfully send a get request and got the response and now let's see how we can send a post request and for that we can uh, we need to pass uh, another argument as i said before and we can just copy these lines instead of creating another one so we can copy it then we can paste it here So now let me explain it. So the second argument will be a JavaScript object, which contains some extra information, as I said. So here we are passing or we are changing the, the HTTP method that we want to use, which is post. And the body will be the data that we want to send. And as I said before, this stringify method will just convert this JavaScript object to a, to a string. And this header is the same as the, this header that we created here. And that's it. So the rest of the code will be same. So if I just open the console, we got error. And I know why, because we didn't change the, uh, the URL because uh, we, don't, we no longer send a get request. So we need to change the URL as well. Okay, so now we got the response that is the uh, same as this uh, output that they showed here. So that means that the, we send it and uh, send the request and got the response that we expected. And now we can move on to the last method that I want to show you, which is the Axios library. Because Axios is an external library, the first thing that we need to do when we want to work with it is to include it in our project. And to do that, you can go to the Axios GitHub page and then we can go to the installing section. And here they are showing different ways of installing it. So for example, we can use NPM to install it. Or we can use the CDN, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to copy this script tag and then we can go to the HTML file. And here we can paste it in a head. But we could also paste it here above our own JavaScript uh, file. The important thing is that it should be above our own JavaScript file. So it doesn't matter if you want to paste it here or down here. Then we can go back uh, in our JavaScript file and comment these lines. And type it Axios here. And to work with Axios, simply we can type Axios. Then if we want to create a simple get request we can type get and then we need to pass a url which will be the url that we want to send the request to it and because this get method will return a promise we can use the then method here this promise will give us a response and then we can console.log this response so here we, you see the response that we got and the section that we are interested in is this data. So we can add dot data to this response and here is the data that we got. For the post request, we can do the same by typing axios.post 
pass the URL, which will be this one. And then we can pass the data that we want as a JavaScript object. So this will be the data that we want to send and we can copy this, these lines, paste it here. So title, body and the user ID. And we don't need to use the stringify method from the JSON to convert it because it will do it automatically. So now this post method will also return a promise which will give, give us a response and then we can console.log this response and the data that we want and you see that this data is uh, same as which I showed you before this output. So, but there is another way to create the, a request in an Axios which we can just type axios and then we can pass a javascript object as argument to it and in this javascript object we can type method which will be the http method that we want to use and this it will be get then the url which will be this url And this uh, Axios will also return a promise which will give us a response. Then we can console.log this response data. So you see that we got the same result. And for the post request, you can just change this get to post, change the URL and then we also need to add data and this data will be title which is uh, full and then the body which is bar and the user id is one so and if i and the rest is same, so we can just uh, console.log the response data, and the, here is the same result. So, so as you saw, the, there is two methods to create the requests, and uh, it depends on you which you prefer. Okay, so this was all about the access library. And uh, as you saw, I just created some simple requests in these three methods. So I just want to show you different methods to work with the APIs or creating HTTP requests. And if you want to create more complex requests, you can see the documentation of these methods. So this means that this will be the end of this video. I hope the video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you got problems or if you had any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below. So I'm going to try to answer them if I knew the answer. So see you in another video.